What is going on guys? Welcome back. My name is AJ and you're watching the Beamer Dude Garage and in today's video we're going to be talking about the top five modifications that you can do for under $200 for your E46 or E46 M3. You definitely don't want to miss out on this one, so stay tuned. Okay guys, so if you clicked on today's video, you already know what we're here to discuss. We're here to talk about the top five modifications for your E46 for under $200. Now, I do know times are tough right now and adulting can be a little bit hard, especially when you have responsibilities. And let's be real, we all wanna do something to our cars without necessarily breaking the bank. Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm definitely not made of money and YouTube doesn't pay me a whole lot to do what I'm doing. So with that being said, I'm pretty calculated on what modifications I do on my E46. Keeping in mind, I do have another project it's in the garage that I want to modify as well. So maintaining a specific budget for each particular car is a bit difficult. So with keeping budgeting in mind, in today's video, we're going to be solely using eBay for our parts searching and sourcing because let's face it, most companies that are small use eBay to sell their products. And this is a great way to support local businesses. This is a great way to support small businesses given this time in our country. So without further ado, uh, let's get on to the list. <laughs> So for the first item on my list, I want to focus on the E46 M3 exhaust. Now, I'm not talking about the axle back, the Section 3, the status quo exhaust that everybody seems to hear when they get E46. They throw on an eBay axle back and they make their car sound like crap. Now it's widely known that there are a couple things you can do to take care of that rasp that the E46 M3 is known for that you either love or you hate, but in all honesty, we all kind of hate it. No, I'm not talking about the axle back at all. I want to focus on the mid section or the uh, section two. This is the resonating section of the E46 exhaust that has a resonator on one side and no resonator on the other. It has been largely determined that this is a primary area that causes the rasp on the S54 engine and there's been tons of write-ups on how you mediate that. And 90% of the time it has to do with an AR50 or some type of resonator that is equal to or equivalent to the factory resonator, thereby eliminating 90% of the rest. No, what we're gonna focus on is simplifying this section altogether. By using Manzo's two to one stainless steel mandrel bent center section, you are effectively simplifying the exhaust system and the best part of it all, it works with your factory exhaust system. Coming with OEM flanges on the header side and the back box side, you can systematically choose your exhaust note, starting with the center section and then working your way to the back. And the best part of it all, no hacking, no welding. It fits with your factory exhaust, giving you the utmost control over your exhaust system. You can introduce a AR50 if you'd like, or you can leave it unresonated. It's completely up to you. The fact that it fits with your factory exhaust gives you way more options when it comes to itemizing and specifically tuning your exhaust to your particular liking. And that's exactly why it's made it to my list. So if you've driven an E46 or any BMW from the mid 90s to the early 2000s, you know the difference between a maintained shifter and a poorly maintained Anyone who's replaced all the bushings, anything to do with the shifter or assembly knows all too well that it can get expensive fairly quickly. So what are your options? Do you spend a thousand dollars plus getting yourself a CAE shifter or do you spend a couple hundred dollars less and get yourself something pretty comparable from RTD, from Coolworks? No, that's definitely not what I'm here to present to you. I'm here to present to you an option for a chassis mounted shifter for the grand total of about $110. I've been running this particular shifter on my E36M3 for a few years. You guys just probably haven't realized it. This particular chassis mounted shifter is probably the best bang for your buck. It's sporting a rather beefy spherical bearing, much like the Beamer World Racing Performance Shifter now, that comes in a little bit over $200. Now this one is a complete bargain because it literally removes all your shifter assembly equipment and it does exactly what all the other ones in its comparable price range do, but for a fraction of the cost. 
Now this next particular item is nothing new to the BMW community. If you drive an E36 or an E46, they're exactly the same in the moment that you drop your car, you realize how inadequate the factory camber arms are. What makes a good one? What makes a poor one? You see a $45 one on eBay, then you see a $300 one someplace else. So what do you buy? How do you make the determination that one is better than the other one? Given the fact that the factory one is pretty much made of tin foil, if you hit anything, anything at all, it's gonna bend and your factory camber will never be the same until you replace it. Now, how do you tell which one you should get and which one you should? If you've ever had to install a camber arm for E36 or E46, you know how sucky it is. The passenger side is much, much easier than the driver's side because the driver's side upper control arm or camber arm interferes with the factory exhaust, uh, forcing you to have to do a combination of lifting or lowering the differential on the rear, and it's just a pain in the But wait, there's more. That's actually not the worst of it. The worst of it actually comes when it comes time to do your alignment. If you have to do your alignment, or if you have to do your self-alignment just to get yourself uh, to an alignment shop, you do the passenger side, no problem, but the moment that you have to adjust camber on the driver's side, it becomes a whole different task in and of itself. 90% of the camber arms out there for the E46 chassis has gone relatively unchanged for the past 10 years because of the position of the bolts on the aftermarket camber arms. You can't really get a wrench or anything in this particular area to prevent the locking nut from spinning with the entire assembly. And without actually knowing, you're actually making it much harder for your alignment specialist to give you a competent alignment on the rear of your car. No, this new and improved design that I've only recently started to see on some of the camber arms puts the adjustment exactly where it needs to be, right smack dab in the middle of the camber arm. Giving the actual individual working on the car the utmost confidence and making sure you can tighten down these connections the best that they possibly can. Now this next particular modification is one that definitely kind of flies underneath the radar. Whether you're a track rat and you're at the track every single weekend and you need to quickly throw on a new set of sticky rubber, or you have that garage queen at home with the five sets of wheels that you just like to try on as if they were Nikes. We have all felt that pain, that unnerving feeling, that cross-threading one of your lug bolts when mounting your wheels on. Yes, I do know that BMW does provide an alignment tool, but who actually wants to go to their trunk and pick through their semi-complete factory toolkit and use the alignment tool just to to align your car when you could just install extended studs. Whether you're going for a factory look with the 50 mil or a slightly modified look with the 75 or the extreme tuner look with a 90 mil, the choice is truly up to you. And for a modification under $200, being as practical as this, it's really a wonder why it hasn't been done more and more often. Now I do agree with the notion if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but we all know deep down, given the right set of circumstances, a little bit of rushing, and that quick tire change can easily spell disaster, and possibly make it to where you can't drive your car to work on Monday. So for my fifth and final modification for the E46 M3 for under $200 has to be the front end sway bar kit from EMUSA, a company that's been around for a very long time, who started off making eBay turbos who are now pretty well known for making decent products. The EMUSA sway bar kit comes with a 30 millimeter three way adjustable sway bar, polyurethane bushings, and on top of that adjustable end links with monoball bushings. Kind of a tough deal to beat for $159 and the best part of it all, it's made right here in the USA. So so anyway guys, that's gonna wrap it up for my list, my five top modifications for the E46 M3 for under $200. Did I leave anything out? If I did, let me know down in the comment section down below. If you made it through to the end of this video, thank you guys for sticking around. If you haven't already, go down to the comment section down below, leave me a comment. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button right next to that, hit that alert button so you can be alerted every time I upload a video. Given the fact that you guys really seem to like this format of video, I am dependent on you guys to present me with options. And the best part of it all, buying things on eBay, it gives us an opportunity to support local businesses, to support those out there that may not be working right now. We can all do our part. We're gonna spend a little bit of money modifying our toys. One of the best things that we can possibly do is support individuals in this way. Anyway guys, I really wanna thank you guys for watching the Beamer Dude channel. I really appreciate all this growth, all this camaraderie we have here on the channel. I really couldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. Anyway guys, I really wanna thank you guys for watching the Beamer Dude channel. And as always guys, peace out and Godspeed. Thank <laughs> you.